Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explain discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Pokefan Corinne Megami33 Sudberg of Team Four Star to discuss the latest Pokemon Sun and Moon trailer. Woo! Aloha! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Alola! <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're here to give our thoughts on the new evolutions, the trial captains, and Kahuna introduced in the latest trailer. So let's go ahead and get started. So, Corinne, glad, glad to have you on. Was hoping to have Grant here as well, but he's a little busy uh, moving, so kind of understand yeah. that. <laughs> but yeah, I saw that you were a uh, enjoyed our disc first discussion I did with Grant, and it was like, well, gotta have you on. I know you're just as much of a Pokemon fan, Pokemon fan, <laughs> Pokemon <laughs> fan, uh, as him. So, real quick before we get into the nitty gritty, what do you think of Sun and Moon so far? I think it's it's really exciting. It seems to be almost like an overload, though. But like, I mean, I'm gonna enjoy it no matter what because I've loved Pokemon since the beginning. But there's just so much here and so many different rules and so many. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what to expect. <laughs> I am excited for it, though. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of changes going into this one, and we got the new Pokemon, we got the new modes, we got all these new just rules almost to go into. But I I love every little section of going uh, that they've revealed so far. Like the individual pieces, I like, and I just I'm hoping they come together as a whole that works well. That's sort of what I've been like, repeating ad nauseum. But I still believe right. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a weird mesh of like Orange Islands meets. Battle Frontier, yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean, like yeah. just like the weird trials and stuff like that. But they're also like battles based off skills and stuff. Like it's interesting. I'll, I'll I'll really be interested to see how it's all put together, especially with the story and stuff. Yeah, it, it seems like there's a lot of potential here between the trial captains, like we see, like you're facing off against Team Skull with the new uh, trial captain Ilima. Uh, there's just all these little things. We got the Ether Foundation, and who knows what they're up to. A uh, lowland forms. It's just ah, there's so much. <laughs> yeah. uh, what stood out to you the most though about Sun and Moon? I I guess just like the totems and stuff like that. Like what goes around. Like what's going on with that concept. I mean, I've only I've visited Hawaii, but there's not too much I really actually know about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in like how much of the folklore they're putting into this um, area. So I guess that's what's standing out to me, just the certain Pokemon that are standing out to be like, oh, that's probably from some folktale in Hawaii and like comfy, like the lei and stuff like that, because that's actually a very important part to Hawaii in general. So it should be interesting how they deal with all the all the stuff like that. That's what's standing out to me the most. Yeah, they really do seem to be embracing the Hawaiian culture and I don't I don't remember any of the other regions really diving into that, like where the the, the actual location in the region determines so much of the designs and ideas behind it. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely tell, like, they did a lot with um, with Black and White with New York and stuff like that. But there was only, like, a few key things they kind of looked at with New York. They, they just loved our cities. <laughs> there, wasn't too, there wasn't too much else with that. Yeah. Um, and and I, guess, I guess with France, with, yeah, with France with the uh, X and Y, I mean, there were a few things, but there wasn't too much with that either. This one's really just diving into, like, the people and the islands and just, like, yeah, it's really interesting. It, I think Hawaii is a popular vacation spot for Japan, though. I think that might be a big reason for the love, just because more Japanese people are able to visit that area. Hmm. I, that's all just conjecture on my part. I have no idea, but... It, Why don't you love New York, Japan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this New Yorker wants to know. What, you got a problem with it? <laughs> uh, but yes, real quick, uh, just what do you think of the Alolan forms, and which one has stood out as your favorite so far? Gosh. Um, We're going to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite? I mean, the Vulpix and Ninetales one is a big jump. Like... I, I, I guess I did like those two and the, the sand true kind of in the igloo <laughs> like <laughs> suit. Yeah. But um yeah, the I guess yeah, the biggest surprise was just Vulpix and Ninetales and the fact that it would be like a fairy ice type. That I think is very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's probably stood up to me the most. Um I do I think it's very interesting the Grimer choice too, for making him an Aloha form. Um, I like the fact that, like, even though those are probably pebbles or garbage, I like the fact that it looks like he has teeth. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah. <it's> like... <laughs> uh, 
he um, looks a little doofy, but like he kind of looks like a zombie. <laughs> a little bit. I, uh, the thing is, I've I've seen some people like offer up some explanations for why things the the Grimer and Mux look like they do, and with the Grimer, the yellow beard around its face is because of. Do uh, you ever get water into your oil uh, for, for your car? There's this yellow sludge buildup around the edges, and that's what it's based off of. I think I, I heard that from Gajin Goomba, actually. He's, he's got a lot of interesting theories about, like, folktales and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think he touched that a little bit. So I was like, wow, that's really <laughs> freaking interesting. Yeah. I also forgot, like, how could I forget this? Probably the biggest and my favorite one that everybody knows. I love Raichu. Yes. So the new Raichu form is adorable. So adorable. <laughs> and I'm totally going to have one on my team. Well, so. it's awesome, too, because it's an electric psychic type, which is the first time we've ever had that combination. It's, it's great. Yeah, and I'm totally going to name it Puka. For you uh, anime nerds out there, you'll get that <laughs> reference. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I, I've really, I'm pretty much with you though. Volpix, Ninetales, and Raichu have definitely stood out the most to me. I do like Alolan Marowak and the, the fire twirler aspect of it. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. If anybody wants to learn about, like, certain origins, especially of, like, Marowak and Executor, like, Gajin Goomba's got some great videos on them that explains, like, the whole origin behind it like these like we think it's a lot it's silly these forms and stuff but there's actually a lot of thought that goes into them mm -hmm. I, I i really love that aspect of uh, sun and moon especially this that's why i feel like the designs are so strong this generation is because you can look at them and sort of immediately tell what they're going for it's it just sort of I don't know, it works. It feels like the design is especially strong this generation, at least to me. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, it, it's so good. But, all right, next question. Who's going to be your starter? Oh, well, I'm a water starter because water is superior. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I will say, though, that um, the only time I never picked a water type was um, in Gold and Silver. I actually really loved Cyndaquil. Totodile is a weird water type. I, I don't know. His stats aren't as great as, like, other water types, and... Yeah, mm. like Cyndaquil I thought was a lot, had a lot more potential. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely a Poplio fan. He's so cute. Like, everybody's just like, ew, he's a clown seal. I'm like, that's awesome, he's a clown seal. Why is that weird? <laughs> like, <laughs> See, this is the why you guys have the best opinions. Because <laughs> I, I've been a champion of Poplio since the beginning. It's always been my favorite. I, I just love its look. And, you know, I don't, I've actually gone 2-2-2. Two, 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 for each of the gens and it's it's kind of funny to return back to the water starter and i just i just love the look of it and as soon as i saw brion it's like well i'm sold i, I chose <laughs> correctly <laughs> it looks just like hey guys like just like <laughs> so happy and just like i did hear a theory that they were going off because this is um the anime is kind of doing like a school setup that these three are kind of like school stereotypes i guess oh my god with with popular like Papio being like the popular type or like just like the the school captain or whatever uh -huh. and then like the owl being like sort of like the nerdy kind of keep to himself type <laughs> and then the cat being just like the bully and like all tough and rough and stuff <laughs> you know so, what i could look at these and I immediately tell those personalities were going to be the ones they were going to choose yeah <laughs> as soon as you said that i was like yep alice rallis the nerd litton's the uh, let's go with emo kid or bully <laughs> and probably is just a happy-go-lucky let's do our best guys type. yeah uh, you could totally see it in their faces it's so funny <laughs> that's great uh it, yeah it's i'm Totally with you. Rallet is close, because I love the Rallet design, but there's something about Poplio that just immediately drew me in. So. I know. Uh, and any, just, of the other new Pokemon that have stood out to you? Well, I, I love Bon Sweet because I was just like, oh, it's kind of like another Cherubi kind of setup, and maybe we'll turn onto something cute, which... It turned into something, not what I expected. <laughs> I mean, its second form is really cute, and please forgive me that I'm saying these names wrong. Uh... Stini, St or Stini, I think I'm not sure. Yeah, gotta wait for the official English Pokedex to understand half these names. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Serena, like once I saw her, all I could think of was like applause, applause, applause. I'm here for the applause, applause. Just like shaking those legs and everything. <laughs> like, oh my god. Yeah, those are some uh, 
pretty wild design. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get into these uh, new Pokemon we have and yeah. start out with Steenie. And no, I'm agree I totally agree with you. I actually watched the Japanese trailer for. Um, oh, I, I actually watch. I watch. I watch both the Japanese and English because you never know. Oh, there's you know, always something different. They they yeah. They definitely focused a little bit more on each individual Pokemon, which is why it was longer this time around because they didn't right. really show anything different. It was just like here's a little bit more footage of it and. My God! As soon as I saw Steenie, I was like, "Oh my God, she's adorable." <laughs> <laughs> or I, I say, I should say it, but really, it is a very feminine design, and I gotta True. say, she. But, but yeah, Steenie is just so cute. <laughs> <laughs> she seems like she'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I like her. I mean, she's a mid evolution, not too much, and potential for me to use since I will be choosing Poplio and having a grass type in there. It's not a doesn't seem like a bad choice. Exactly, yeah. That, she'll probably be my choice as well. Especially the fact that her evolution, like, has very interesting things going on. We got the, we got the Trop Kick. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, lo I love that name, the Trop Kick. <laughs> like, it's pretty awesome. Mm. I mean, we eventually needed, like, a, another cool physical move. I mean, Leaf Blade's pretty cool. Leaf Blade's pretty cool sounding. But, like, Trop Kick, I mean, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, and it lowers their attack. I mean, there's this is just an all-around good move, and it, it, it definitely feels like she's going to be a... Or it's going to be a physical attacker. And then it has its own version of Bruxish's Brux, uh, ability, uh, Queenly Majesty, which prevents yeah. opponents from using their priority moves, which... That's a really interesting concept that they're continuing to use that, and I, I really like Sarina's design. <laughs> yeah. It's all about those legs, I guess. It's the crazy <laughs> hair legs. and dem legs, yeah. Even the little crown, but I, it's like uh, the whole Sar names makes me think they're going off of Russian royalty, which is really interesting. Like, I wonder if they're going with the ballet aspect of it, but it, this doesn't look like a ballerina to me other than, well, I guess maybe the poofs at the hips. I guess that is where you get the ballerina yeah, aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. This is a Russian ballerina Pokemon. <laughs> they, they, they are definitely going off a lot of Pokemon that are based off, like, dance and definitely certain forms and stuff, especially, like, those birds that we had with all the different yeah. dance moves and stuff like that. Oricurio is interesting. I'm not sure if we're going to use it, but or, like the just the concept and a lot of forums this generation. There's a lot yeah. of different forums going around, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm all about. I I I was not considering Boons, Bounce Sweet at all, but these evolutions have definitely made me consider it. There's just so many good options. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, next up, we have probably my fa personal favorite of this entire group. Uh, Rabombi, the evolution of Cutie Fly, and I, I, you know what it comes down to? It's the scarf. There's something adorable <laughs> right. about that it's scarf. Like, it's like its weird nose just suddenly turned into a scarf-like thing. Yeah, that's pretty much is what it is. Because you can even see that little um, the uh, the needle point for the scarf. Yeah. That's so funny. But yeah, I I don't know what it is, but this thing is adorable to me. I don't know if I'll use it on my team, but just design-wise, I I really like it. <laughs> It is really cute. I just feel like it's just going to be like a pretty easy thing to hit. But um it, it's so small too. Is it like smaller than a Joltik or I'm not sure. I it's uh 8 inches tall according to the website. Ah, uh, okay. And 1.1 pounds. So this <laughs> thing is not like, big. <laughs> well, in the game it doesn't really matter, but like in the anime anything that just sits on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's basically a done battle. It'll be interesting to see how it looks in the show. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it looks really cute. Mm -hmm. Not too much else to say about it, but like I said, I like the design more than anything else. It's another bee-ish kind of thing. We have a lot of bee Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we do. It's funny, like, it's a very different bee Pokemon. You look at Bee Drill and you look at this one and it's just like, that's not quite the same. <laughs> True, yeah. Next up we have Jangmo O's evolution, first evolution, Hakamo O which turns into a dragon fighting type. And we actually saw this one earlier, thanks to the Koro Koro leaks. And uh, this is basically our typical dragon types that start, you know, it will take forever to train in order to actually evolve and get to its yeah. final form. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think of Akamo O? There's a lot going on with him. A lot of scales. <laughs> yeah. This is all about the armor. <laughs> he, he didn't really strike me as like a fighting... I mean, I could sort of see the fighting... Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, he's definitely different from 
compared to other fighting types, but uh, he should be interesting to use. I don't think there's been another dragon fighting type before either, right? I don't so. think so. It, it's not nothing's coming off the top of my head, but I, I also like we have to go through seven hundred different Pokemon to try to think of them at all at this point. Yeah. So it's it's kind of crazy, but I'm I'm interested to see what his defenses are. You know, if like flying is actually really going to hurt him, but being a dragon. Oh, but. that would be interesting, huh? Ice to, uh, actually, ice might not be as effective. I can't remember if ice is effective against fighting or just oh, that's neutral. True. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. It has a defense with the uh, with against fighting because yeah, fighting is strong against ice. Yeah, that's hmm. I'm curious about mm. that. Ooh, it's a it's a big <laughs> threat there. Yeah, this could be a very interesting. I could, I I kind of like it, I, especially you know, Como O is all about the scales. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now this thing is just I, I I didn't have a really like solid impression of it, but overall I think I like the design. It doesn't stand out to me in any way, but I still think it like this is a cool looking dragon. That's really where it comes down to for me. It's got that special ability too, right? Yeah, it has a new move called Clanging Scales, uh, where it scrapes its scales uh, covering its body against one another to attack with a great clamor. So it's a sound-based move. And then after using this move, its defense goes down. So that's actually kind of interesting. I'm wondering if it's a dragon-type move or a fighting-type move. I'm guessing if it's scales, it's probably dragon-type. Probably, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of fascinating, and especially since uh, one of its abilities is soundproof, which would, should mean that this move would actually be ineffective against another Como O that has soundproof. <laughs> then we have our uh, edgy Pokemon, <laughs> <laughs> Silvali. So, what did you think of Titanol initially? I mean, right away, before like actually reading anything, when I just heard Titanol, I'm like, no type! But, like,. <laughs> Now I'm not really sure what's going on with this. It's a little confusing, especially now like that we see uh, Silvalli, is it? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say half these names. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely like some weird experimental chimera thing. So, I mean, maybe it's just something that the bad guys are toying around with and trying to make their own like evil type or something like that. Yeah, that's... I mean, it's it's been called the synthetic Pokemon. It's been said that this is basically been designed, I'm not sure designed by who, but because this is the Pokemon we see Gladion using all the time, and yeah. you know, even have that new artwork with Gladion for uh, Silvalli, and I gotta say, it's it's an interesting design, it's actually kind of fascinating in how little it changes Yeah. compared to Titan All. It basically breaks out of the helmet, gets white hair, and we see its face, and that's it. I don't think the size or anything <laughs> changes, I haven't taken a closer look at it yet. Yeah, at first it was just like, I, I'm pretty sure everybody just thought it was like, oh, it's just an anchor to control its power. It's just like, oh no, it just fit the size of its head, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't like a, expect that, but okay. <laughs> <that'll work. laughs> yeah, it breaks out of the helmet and all of a sudden its power goes up. Like it talks, it really loves to talk about how uh, fast this Pokemon will be. And that's, that's definitely interesting in and of itself. But then we have its new ability, the Arceus system. And... Boy, is that a wink, wink, nod, uh, nudge, nudge. <laughs> yeah. So basically, they were trying, whoever made this thing is trying to recreate the god of Pokemon, which, <laughs> oh, that's ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but even going down to the fact that it has that same sort of ability that Arceus had, where it was able to change its type, and so Volley can do the same thanks to these different discs, and then it has a move, that multi-hit, which allows it to, or multi-attack, excuse me, in order to change the actual type of its move. So you can really have it sell volume on your team and have it be whatever you want. It's going to be interesting for Pokemon competition, though. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. would I guess, would Savali count as, like, a legendary, being that, like, what it is? I'm not sure. I don't think it's considered a legendary. I'm not, but I, I wouldn't know, but it's... <laughs> like all, com all, com all competitions are going to be like, any type of Pokemon, not Savali. <laughs> <laughs> it's too strong. Can't do it. It's it's not, it's a, it's a freak of nature. Mm. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, it is basically our Mewtwo of this generation. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It's kind of something I feel like Team Flare would have played around with, but then again, we don't know too much about Team Skull yet. So Yeah, but it, just off the top of my head, I, like when you look at Team Skull and they're sort of like street gang gang type aesthetic like i can't imagine him doing into going into science to recreate a god right but the uh i guess the aether foundation <laughs> yeah that's why i mean 
Type Null and Sovali is probably the big reason I think that the Ether Foundation might be the, the the true bad guys, but but they're all pretty and it's white in their facility and everything looks nice. Yeah, that <laughs> totally makes them not evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 intrigued by Sovali, but I'm not. I, I I definitely want to see how it turns out, like, or if we'll be able to how we'll be able to catch it or not. Because uh, we haven't seen yeah. it in the wild. We've wild. I don't believe we've already only seen it in relation to um, Gladion, at least when it's uh, when you're facing it. You just need a you need a special chain to carry it around or something. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be wild? Well, finally, we have our new Lolan forms, and we already talked a little bit about a Lolan Grimer. Uh, but the, actually, I just read read that the uh, according to the Pokemon website that those. Uh, teeth things of those are actually residual toxins from the garbage it eats because the the way <laughs> <laughs> Grimer comes around it comes about is because basically when the population of Alola increased they couldn't deal with their garbage so they started feeding it to Grimer <laughs> and Grimer oh my god and Grimer kind of changed and now they have this sort of unquenchable hunger for the garbage and if they can't find garbage they'll just start eating mechanical things uh, so now they're like each like landfill has like a hundred grimers in it in order to take care of all their trash but they have also become more toxic as a result i guess and uh so those crystallized teeth like thing are um basically so dangerous that they can't even be broken down <laughs> it's it's one of those classic pokemon descriptions where like it's so amazing in this way it, it goes to the 10th degree <laughs> Pokemon, you're hysterical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically can't even touch this thing, right? Yeah, not really. Uh, and even more so with Muck, because it'll eat whatever it's with it, whatever's in reach without pausing. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't go crazy enough to just start eating other Grimer. <laughs> oh man, wouldn't that be wild? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, I'm so hungry and you guys are here, so... Yeah, I'm gonna have to eat you. <laughs> I mean, even with the special abilities and stuff, Pokemon aren't too far off from, like, animals and stuff like that and how they go through evolution in certain ways so wouldn't be surprised me if there is some cannibalism in pokemon there's darker stuff in there oh so. totally i would not be surprised at all <laughs> <laughs> one of the actually more interesting facts that the pokemon website says about them is that you actually can't they don't smell bad because they keep all the unpleasant aromas actually within them huh. so yeah this is a this is a fresh smelling poison type <laughs> well not fresh smelling well. but not bad smelling <laughs> It was always kind of put into the anime lore that um, if you had a stinky-based Pokemon, that the more friends w that you are with it, the less it would smell. So it's kind of interesting that the Pokemon just kind of controls it on its own. Yeah. <laughs> I love how the uh, the rainbow effect on it is really cool as well. Oh, that was trippy, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Really taking advantage of that, because I'm pretty sure you couldn't do that effect in the old games. Yeah, really. So it's... Ah, great, but overall, overall, what do you think of these new Pokemon before we move on to our new trial captain in Kahuna? Again, I think Grimer and Muck are going to be a lot of fun, actually. I mean, I'm usually not a poison type user, but now that they got the added dark thing, it could be probably a useful thing to have on the side. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite uh, Pokemon that I've ever used on a team is Drapion, and that was poison dark as well. So uh, Alolan yeah. Muck could be a powerhouse. Definitely, yeah. So I'm... Definitely interested in that. Otherwise, Serena is probably like my favorite of the new guys that they've showed. <laughs> kind of, is, does it doesn't have anything to do with the, fa the fact that it sounds a lot like Serena. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, that'll be a cute nick. I'm sure everybody's gonna nickname it that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it does like to dance, so. Or Ga or Gaga or somebody with fabulous legs. <laughs> there you go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we got introduced to our new trial captain, and we actually do know that this is our very first trial captain that we will encounter because, uh, because they specifically mention the trainer school, which is right in there on Melee Melee Island. Uh, so yeah, here's our first trial captain, and even seen a little bit of the trial, which we've seen over and over again in the uh, <laughs> other trailers. But yes, Ilima who is is a guy according to uh, like they don't actually say the gender in the the US website but according to the different websites around the world I've gotten a lot of reports on about this this is a boy I pretty much thought it was a guy yeah it definitely you know once you once you get here that it's like yeah I can see it as a boy and uh, he's definitely normal that's for sure <laughs> just like the, just like the type he's interested in yep very normal not much else to really say yeah <laughs> like it's basically this is basically like a school kid 
made gym leader, essentially, to me. It's like, how can we think of the blandest normal type trial captain ever? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to be looking normal, but well, we'll give him pink hair. That'll... That'll make and him stand And then the out. game, like, when you battle him, like, his eyes open up and he gets all, like, <laughs> I do like where he puts his trial captain symbol, though, as, as, as a kind of earring. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, indicating which type he is by having it be white. And I, there's little, there are little touches here and there that it works for Ilima. But, yeah, as a normal type, he doesn't stand out. But I don't think we have a new Whitney on our hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think one that a lot of people have taken notice to for... Well, kind of obvious reasons is the new kahuna of Akala Island, which is Olivia. And not really much said about her other than the fact that she was able to become kahuna at a young age, but she still insists that she's just a normal girl. So it's an interesting little backstory. And, you know, she does have a Z ring, so she will have that ability just like Hala. She looks pretty badass to me. Yeah, no, she does. Like, she's like... Like, she looks more threatening than Hala to me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, this this is a chick that would, um... she kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I also like that she's got a werewolf puppy. I keep forgetting, because it's a rock type. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't look like a rock type, but, like, I was just like, oh, why does she... Oh, it's rock. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a rock. <laughs> uh, no, I, I love the rock rough line, and it's interesting to me how she mentions how she specializes in rock types because I wasn't sure what they were going to go for with the kahunas but after seeing Hala with a Cabrawler I think he might be a, a fighting type focused kahuna right so I don't I'm not sure if you heard this theory before but I uh in the way that you had there was this one trailer the um the uh, Legendaries trailer where there was kind of this overview where they were showing everything so far about Pokemon. They had a section that showed the trial captains revealed so far performing Z moves. So I kind of wonder if that, if the trial captains are going to be the ones teaching you the Z moves uh, oh. for each type. So that made me think, oh, are there going to be 18 different trial captains? But there might only be uh, 14 if the Kahunas fill in the roles of these certain types so olivia's rock and hala is fighting so that takes care takes care of those types there's no need for trial captains so i i find that kind of fascinating if we're going to see every single type represented by either the trial captain or kahuna that would make a lot of sense especially if they're from here that they would know different types of moves and stuff I mean, and we do get TMs usually, so this is just another way of, like, presenting that to different Pokemon. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. If you look at it as a TM, rather than getting a TM from them, you get exactly. the Z-Crystal. Wow, I, li I really like that. Me too. <laughs> the, I, I, I like how the, the Z-Ring is not like, is uh, unlike the uh, Mega Ring, it's not like this one thing that only you have until close to post-game. Or close to the right. end of the game or post-game. It's like, from the beginning, this is just sort of a common item everybody has. Exactly. Yeah, overall, I'd say, you know, not nothing huge, nothing earth-shattering about this trailer, but still a lot of good stuff. It's just really interesting how they're going to battle between the Trials and battling a Kahuna, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't know, like, we don't even know if we'll actually fight the, the Trial Captains. It just would go, go for the, the different Trials and then eventually right. take on the Kahuna, which... <laughs> We come back home and it's like, Mom, look, I, I won the league. And you got like 40 different badges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still looking great. But uh, you actually mentioned before we talked about this, you wanted to bring up the uh, Sun and Moon anime real quick. So just real quick, what are your impressions of the Sun and Moon anime? A lot of people are kind of weirded out by the style, but um, I'm pretty sure it's being done by one of my favorite animators that worked on... Uh, uh, one of my favorite One Piece movies. Um, it was the one where they're on the island and they got like the little plants in their head. I forgot which one that is. I, six or nine. I, I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I just love that kind of fluidy, like kind of carefree style. It leaves a lot to the imagination, especially with the Z moves. So like I'm, I don't know. I'm looking a lot forward to it, but um, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous because a friend of mine told me a theory, and I think they're kind of going this route. Because in Japan right now, there's another popular series that I'm sure we all know mm -hmm. called Yokai Watch. And Yokai Watch is okay. Not a big fan. Maybe it's just because I'm such a hardcore Pokemon fan and this thing is stepping all over it. But in Japan, it's really popular. I don't know how popular it is here, but it's really popular. <laughs> and if you could tell from the new anime, 
it's trying to be a little like Yokai Watch. Yeah. It's it's like with obvious things. I mean, freaking the Z Ring and the kids got the Yokai Watch, so we got like a new band thing. Not like. I mean, not like the Mega Stone thing is like that much of a ripoff from like. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I mean, it's not weird for an anime to borrow little things, but like the fact that Ash is going to school and like. It's, it's turning into kind of a slice of life anime. Yeah, like, we don't know if he's actually going to venture out or if this is just going to be like... Because there's, there's been school things in the anime, too. There's been times where Ash has gone to a camp for, like, a couple of episodes or, like, a school. So this is not too surreal. But whether that's going to be the whole basis of the series where he's just in school and then they go, like, on a field trip or, like, he's just in school for a bit and then he just goes off, mm. you know. It, it would feel like a waste if he doesn't eventually do the the, the island trial, you know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but there's just little similarities, and I'm just kind of like, eh, you don't need to go that far. But I guess Yokai Watch is doing so well there that the the company's getting a little nervous. <laughs> it might be. Hell, even 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 Tora Cat has like a little spear kind of thing on it, and that's like what the the main cat has. He's got this the little nya. I don't know what their freaking names. <laughs> nya Bo or like. <laughs> The little red cat. He's got like a little soul spear or like whatever on his uh -huh. thing. And Tora, Tora Cat's got a little flame ball and it's like, yeah, there's like little things. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, t I totally get you. There's like the butler yokai named Whisper and now we have the Rotom yeah, and Dex. and now we got the talking Rotom. That's that's <laughs> interesting. I mean, granted, it, it worked in their favor because it's like, oh, good thing Rotom's a ghost type. Nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it kind of makes sense. We already have a, a history of him possessing things. It all yeah. kind of works. So the thing is, like, that's why I can't be too upset. Is like, yeah, they're probably curbing from Yokai Watch in some ways, but it's also, at least they're putting on their own spin, or at least it's making sense in how they're doing a lot of this stuff. But right. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I do like the animation style of the anime um, because when you see it in motion, it's so fluid. Like when you pause it at the stills, yeah, they look a little weird, but that's what kind of happens when you have that fluid uh, anime style. And I mean, I mean, Ash has gradually changed throughout the years, so this isn't the most drastic change. I mean, heck, even last year, people were freaking out when his eye colors were changing, like... <laughs> and, you know, he's definitely become more angular, like, they definitely have been smoothing him out since then, mm -hmm. like, so... This is also the most expressive we've seen Ash. Like, to see those crazy out reactions, like, with him and Mallow in that latest uh, clip, uh, they're just, they're really sort of uh, expanding upon his personality, which they kind of did with X and Y, they gave him, like, made him competent, but he also didn't do much, you know? Yeah. Uh, there was a funny thing in the preview with him trying to say aloha. It's pretty funny. Oh, really? Just kind of, <laughs> the, the Japanese voice actress is just screaming like, ah! Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, uh, he, might, he might be saying a little more, like, English, too. That should be interesting. Oh, my gosh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I think that covers it for our Sun and Moon discussion. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And Corinne, where can they find you at? Uh, for right now, you can find me on Twitter, Magami33. I'm actually planning to start a new channel. Hopefully going to release that in January. So just follow my Twitter and look out for that. And keep enjoying Team Four Star stuff. Awesome. And of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Pokemon and other things gaming too. Until next time. Bye. Bye.